Okay, so today we have an impromptu unboxing. This is going to be an item that I just couldn't resist picking up at this price, as it might be the last chance I get to get one of these. So today I'm going to use this nice Swiss Army knife here. And let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, first we have a sling, that's nice, it wasn't advertised, but that's great. Ooh, nice packing on the bolt handle. There we go. All right. So we have here a beautiful Swiss K31. It looks to be in pretty good shape. Wood's a little dinged up. The bluing, not bad. There's some good bluing lost there, even some pitting. That's unfortunate. Good gouge there. Of course, these come with no magazine. Chamber flag, it was packed well. All right, well, we got it down on the bench. Let's take a closer look. First of all, this sling that was included, I didn't see this in the listing. Saw some other people got one. Here's how it's looking. It's gonna need, it's a little bit dry. We'll need some TLC, but that'll clean up good. And actually there's a Swiss marking here. And uh, that's just, Pretty cool, seems in good shape. This is just the import tag, center fire. This is my first order with center fire. Let's take a closer look at the rifle, the carbine itself. I was a little upset when I first saw this crack here, but I think that's repairable. And some of these scuffs, uh, there's nothing I can do about that one but there's a few other dents here that could possibly steam out. And this barrel band was a little bit loose, so I'm wondering if somebody tightened it too tight, caused that crack there. But um, let's take a closer look. All right, let's take a look starting from the back. There's a few places that have some specks of rust. Maybe an even a little pitting here. Some bluing loss. Beautiful crest there. Matching barrel. And here's where that crack is. Some of this just looks like dings and dents and that some of that dark spots will come out. A little bit of rust and some bluing loss on the muzzle end there. Some more of that gunk. The only real issue is this guy right there. And then here in the light, you can kind of see some of the light rust forming. But we can take care of that. A few other nicks and scratches. The other thing that's kind of interesting is the yellow paint here. I don't know if that was some sort of rack number or individual number. 
something along those lines. But otherwise, the rest of it looks pretty good. Like that one might be able to be steamed out. Metal on this side looks good. And the rest of the stock looks pretty good. And here's the muzzle. Stacking rod. Good shape. Let's take a look under this butt plate and see if there happens to be a troop tag. I'm not holding my breath as I saw a few of these that didn't have them, so I won't be disappointed if it's not there. It's still a great rifle all around. You can see there's some rust there, some dings, but nothing too bad. This is again listed in very good condition. All right. So again, I was lucky enough to get a sling, so I'm not going to be disappointed if this is not here. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay. Man, I lucked out on that one, huh? While we're under here. Looks like V54. Man, that is cool. Fritz. Oh, this was once your rifle. I'm sure you looked after this really well. So I'm going to leave this under here where it belongs. It's not doing any harm. I am going to come back and uh, clean up this butt plate, but for now it's going to stay under there so that if this ever leaves my possession, it will be there where it belongs for the next person. Okay, so we got it out of the stock and it's all good things underneath here. No pitting, no rust even, and I just wanted to get you <laughs> take a look at that beautiful bluing. It's hard to tell in these video lights, but it's absolutely immaculate until you get towards the muzzle. But it's just so nice to pull something out of the wood and see just pristine bluing. That's so cool. Anyway, everything's looking good in the stock and the handguard. The stock is a matching number to the barrel and the receiver same with the upper hand guard so that's all good minus my fingerprints and bluing is just spectacular underneath there and i've never owned any swiss firearms so these inspector marks and proof marks are really cool to see Never seen any of these before in person. Beautiful crest there. A little bit of freckling, but we'll take care of that. Again, the barrel matches the receiver. And just beautiful under here. No issues, no rust, no pitting. All around very good. And finally, what had concerned me this crack here on the top handguard, you run your fingernail across it, it gets caught. So I was concerned that was a pretty good crack. However, we go underneath, you can see that doesn't go all the way through. So possibly it could be just a big gouge and then it filled in with some dirt. So you can see some oil spots here and here. And also here and here. So we'll go ahead and get this nice and cleaned up 
and see how it's looking. But this is promising that it's not cracked all the way through. That was concerning to me. So overall, that's a great sign. We might as well take a look at the bolt. Here's the bolt face. And so cool to just study a new system from a different country, different engineering, straight pull design isn't one that I've ever had a chance to work with. So just all around very cool and I love these kind of moments. And lastly, before we get this cleaned up, look at this beautiful two-stage trigger. One, two. Ah, oh, that's so nice. And it feels about three, three pounds, somewhere in there. We can get a gauge on it, though, but man, it's really nice. Man, I can't wait to shoot this thing, see what kind of accuracy we can get. All right, let's get it cleaned up. All right, we got her all put back together. And the more I spend time with this rifle, the more that I really just love it so much. The quality of this is just outstanding. And although this might not have been, you know, the bargain of a century, it just, I'm so glad that it forced me into Swiss products because I can tell that I'm just gonna be hooked from here on out. So um, this is just fantastic. Um, I was able to source a couple other parts like an original magazine here, which isn't matching to the gun, but I was able to pick one up before they got sold out. In addition to the magazine, I picked up a aluminum muzzle cap, which is gonna be really nice to help protect that beautiful crown that's in there. I also picked up a red stripper clip of the training rounds, which is nice. So six individual weighted rounds, which is nice, as well as a original cleaning kit, which is cool because it has some of the original grease in there, two cans of it actually, so I still have a little bit that I can use. And some other tools as well as the pull through. So that's great to have some of these original items back along with her. And as I mentioned, it did come with this very nice sling, which after some conditioning turned out really well. I am going to try and source a period correct version for this rifle itself. Based on the serial number, this rifle was produced in 1950. This sling is dated to 1938, so I will try my nerdy best to pick up a sling that matches the date of this rifle, which will be really nice to have. Okay, and real quick, I just want to show you a couple different resources. Since this is a new platform to me, and Swiss firearms are new to me in general, I wanted to pick up a couple things to help me understand a little bit more about them. So the first one was... This book by the Four Collectors Only series from North Cape Productions. Um, it's a pretty good introduction to a lot of Swiss long guns, including the K11 and other things. My only complaint with this book is, again, similar to the other how the other ones are organized, which is they're not organized by model type. It's sort of, here's the bolt system for all the different models here's the you know magazine markings for all the different models so that's a minor complaint but um, otherwise this book was 20 bucks and well worth it plenty of good information on the k31 in here so i found that very helpful and secondly this is just a translation of the swiss manual for the k31 as well as the k11 and I found this online and just printed it off since I'm a hard copy kind of person. But what I'll do is I'll put a link to the PDF or to the web address down in the description. You guys can take a look. I found a lot of good information in here um, about zeroing and maintenance and just general overview of the system from the Swiss themselves. So that's always helpful. So I did go ahead and get it all nice and greased up as these were built to work with grease and not oil. So she feels really good and is nice to have some of that old grease cleared off of there. This is gonna be a shooter for me. Like I may have said, 
and not just a collectible. So I really plan to get out and practice my long distance shooting and this is gonna be my gateway into that area. So let's talk about price. Now what initially attracted me and many others to this deal with Centerfire was the $3.99 price tag for their 30th anniversary sale. Now we have to be honest with ourselves and say, what does this come out to in terms of overall price? If you're looking at purchasing an original magazine for this carbine, you know those are going to run at least $100. If you can find a reproduction magazine, the keep shooting mags were about $50, $60, and those are long out of stock, especially with all these new K31 owners. So in terms of the overall price, you know, I'm looking at $540 altogether. Now, Edelweiss Arms has quite a few beautiful K11s, K31s that you can pick out around that price that will be matching. Now, I'm only throwing that out there to play the devil's advocate here. Um, am I upset that I went this route? No, not at all. As I said before, this got me into these Swiss arms and I am just ecstatic. I can't wait to get this out and shooting it. So, um, but we just have to be realistic with ourselves and see how much we're going to spend to end up with a mismatched gun. People love to say all matching except it's either all matching or it isn't. And in this case, it never will be unless I can find that very specific individual who happened to get the magazine that belongs to this. Speaking of which, if you have rifle or carbine number 7947590, I have your magazine. Get in touch with me and I would love to send this back to its original home. So anyway, it's just important that we're honest with those kind of questions and what we want out of the deal, that kind of thing. So again, this was my first order with Centerfire Systems and it was fantastic. And now I will never hesitate in the future if they get something in that I need for the collection, I'll pull the trigger on those right away. This came out really well. I did not do a whole lot of work to it. Um, this, what I thought was a crack in the beginning, turned out to just be a big gouge there. Quite a bit of this oil came off the forend here on the top hand guard. There's some pretty good bluing loss up here, but that's to be expected. And again, this is going to be a shooter for me. So having a safe queen is no fun because then I feel like I can't get it out and I can't enjoy it and play with it because I'm too afraid to make any marks on it. So this came out really good. There was some light freckling on top of the receiver here. And most of that, all of that is pretty much gone. And um, I might do once over on the butt plate. This was the roughest condition of the whole carbine, but that's something I can continue to work on. When it comes to the dings and the scratches, and this is all part of its character, and I had mentioned before about possibly steaming some of these out. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them the way they are and just let them tell their little bit of the story of this carbine and how it came to me. And now I have the opportunity to add to that and I'm very much looking forward to that. I ordered this on a Sunday, received it on a Tuesday. So shipping was lightning fast. You saw the packing as in the opening and uh, just their transaction details were really very smooth. So that was great overall. So all that being said, I have a couple more additions to this carbine that I'm gonna put on and turn this into a very nice long range shooter. None of which are gonna be any permanent modifications as I plan to leave this in original condition. But I plan to have a future series of videos about this, so I look forward to doing that. So lastly, I just wanna say thank you to all the people who I've met in the comments section and fellow YouTubers so far in these last few months. You've shared your information and your knowledge with me and I really do appreciate that. It's been a great learning experience. So that's going to be the K31 from Centerfire Systems for their 30th anniversary sale. I just want to say thanks as always for watching. I appreciate it. Until next time, keep your finger off the trigger. We'll see you later.